मुझी आई एम विशाल फ्रॉम मुंबई आई लव यू आई लव यू टू आई लव यू आई हैव बीन प्लानिंग टू कम फॉर द सत्संग फॉर द पास्ट मेनी इयर्स and i used all my free will to try to come but i could not and this year i had no plans <laughs> but i am here <clears throat> i feel hopeless because all the plans i make they don't fructify and what i don't make they fructify i sometimes feel like a puppet i feel i have no control over my life or the life of anyone else it is good thing so my specific question which has been haunting me for last so many years mm. and even though many people have asked you mm. but i am a lawyer so i may be able to ask in a different way <laughs> the same question do i have free will or am i completely predestined because I feel I have no free will and I read Raman Maharishi I read Nisargadatta Maharaj I read the Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells Arjun you are not going to kill them I have already killed them Mr Arjun you are not the doer I read Raman Maharishi and in one of the books written about him similar things that he says that uh, maybe you are not the doer I don't know maybe my interpretation may not be fine but Muji can you in just yes or no <laughs> just yes or no <laughs> without explanation <laughs> so you give me no free will <laughs> explanation can maybe come afterwards but <laughs> just in one single word yes or no tell me this lawyer <laughs> <laughs> can you just tell me this question do i <laughs> any free will it's simple question mujhe <laughs> yes and no <laughs> not fair <laughs> that's the trouble you see you have limited uh, expression of will um, but not complete free will everybody no one can contest that uh, you may have the free will to desire and to dream but you don't have the will the free will and the power to make your dream come true in the way you want uh in fact uh, the whole thing about will and the one who will or won't uh is illusory but perhaps it's too early to say that some other things have to be understood uh which when they are understood will also remove the dilemma and also the misconceptions and leave you very happy quiet and free you spoke about the isness 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 is everywhere and isness is we are also isness so if isness is doing everything then what are we doing 
we being what? <laughs> Just to, to try and uh, define when you say we or I, what are you referring to? We can slow down because it is important. I, I rather not spend long time also over something if we can get there in the shortest, simplest way. I prefer. So when you say I or we, what are you referring to uh, precisely? I do understand that I am not the body. I also understand that I may not be the mind, even though it troubles me so much. Um, but that's the question. If you not... who are troubled by the mind is what? Clearly, you are not identifying yourself as mind. You say you are troubled by the mind. So what could you be uh, that is troubled by the mind? The watcher. Somebody is continuously watching, that's, that's for sure. Is that which is watching detachedly troubled by the mind? I'm Can that which is observing the mind flow, hmm, without attachment and without identity, simple, clear, sober observing, can that be affected or troubled by the mind? I'm not sure, but are these thoughts which come to me, are they coming from this so-called, I don't know what name to give it, so we use the word isness, like you usually do. Bhumuji, is, is this giving me the thoughts? For example, how did I come this year? I got a thought, something has happened. So how did it happen? Was it the isness which made things happen? Mm. Uh, this line is a very complicated route. I would rather, there are some questions, let's put it into two categories for now. I would ask questions which are mm, knowledge questions, which you can ask. How did this happen? How does that work? So on, so on, so on. That's called, I would call it a knowledge question. And uh, I will put another form of question as freedom questions. Questions concerning, yes, I am not able to control the mind flow, my thoughts, feelings, sensation. I have no control, it seems, over important things in my life. And I wish to go beyond that. I've heard that there's a state of freedom. Please, how can I attain this state? That's called freedom questions. They're quite broad also. So, um, if we are going to talk about knowledge questions, of course, the mind is happy there, because it is not threatened by a knowledge question. But about freedom question, I've put that at a higher uh, place, whereby one is searching to be free from the intimidation of the mind, so to speak, or feeling harassed or agitated, want to come away from that state. So those questions are um, pointed towards uh, liberation from the influence or the hypnosis of the psychological identity. No? So which question would you want to put to me? I, I leave it to you. I just just want to uh, discover that isness, and I'm here for that. So hopefully, I will not continue the line of knowledge questions because I do understand that that may not lead me to the freedom path. Maybe much later it might come around to that, but uh, in the time we have here. So I will not waste the time. Okay. Maybe some other question. But thank you so much for giving me. A yes and no answer, but, <laughs> I'm, but hopefully I will I will figure it out somewhere on my own. And uh, thank you so much. I again repeat, I love you, Muji. Mm. I love you. Okay, you can't go like that. <laughs> you cannot go like that. I am a true seeker. I am a true seeker. A true seeker would not go like that. <laughs> hmm? You came all the way from Mumbai, you've come here. I don't know how much time you have here. How much time you intend to stay here? I don't know, Muji. That's true, it's true, you don't know. And, uh, and it's, everything is spontaneous. After hearing you, I have stopped planning. I don't know about what's going to happen in the evening, tomorrow, day after. Yeah. The, is, that, is that a cause for worry or for uh, relaxation? 
I have I have been relaxed now. Earlier I used to be control freak. Ah. I used to sit in a plane and I wanted to fly the plane. Mm. I sit in a car behind and I want to tell the driver how to drive the car. Mm. I want to control everything and I yeah. I got stress. Okay. And then I go to doctor and he says you have stress. I said I know. <laughs> and he's saying he says uh, relax and I said I don't know how to relax. That's when Muji came in my life. So I have learned to relax, but I've, I cannot somehow let go. I cannot surrender. I have issues in surrendering because I'm so much used to controlling everything. But you say controlling is not working anymore. Yes, so now there is little improvement that I can let go mm -hmm. and I don't plan too much because I realize planning is useless. Okay. But I still don't know how to just let go. My mind what is chattering like a monkey. Uh, if you cannot let go, what about let be? If you cannot let go, what about just let be? Meaning, let things be as they are, you be aware of them, and you can also become aware of if I say to you, just let things be, leave things as they are, learn to observe for a little bit. Learn to observe. This is an excellent, uh, great step in awakening to the, the true. Learn to observe without interfering for a while. Just observe, first of all, what is playing around you. Just be aware of them, but don't try to manipulate. We know that it doesn't work. Just be aware first, pay attention, and be also aware when reactions arise from you to want to control something, so you're observing that also. But don't, uh, don't log in to, to that pull. Don't be sucked into anything. Simply observe with detachment or with neutrality. It's, it's a good point? Yes. Yes. So by doing that, at first you'll see that uh, maybe there seem so many things happening. So much. Sometimes when it gets too much, actually, it actually becomes easier to pay attention to yourself. If it, the traffic becomes too much, you can't keep up when the mind wants to count and I say, no, don't count. Uh, simply be aware that all this is coming and going. Everything you see, everything you experience is coming and going. Be very clear about that. Everything is coming and going. Now, you don't have to keep on watching that forever. Watch enough to recognize that what you are seeing, what you are observing, is not stationary, it's not stable. Whether it's on this side of the eyes, in terms of the movements in life, or on behind the eyes, in the realm of thought and feeling, all are observable. Just observe, okay? then at a certain point, if you observe with detachment, you're observing energy, some energy will come back to the place of the observer. And you'll start to become aware of the environment of the observer. You understand this? Yes. That is very important, because right there and then, you will feel the presence of grace in the form of peace and some spaciousness, a lightness, a sense of fear or agitation will start to drift away. And you become increasingly uh, clear that there's only a sense of presence right in the place of I. Where I is, I and presence become one. This is uh, the most significant early steps you can take. Then you become aware that uh, everything is occurring within and to that sense of presence. So the I, naturally, the feeling I is there, even before knowledge. In fact, the I is the first knowing, the first knowing. It is the unlearned 
an unconditioned way in which you know your existence. It is the first knowing. The arising of I is the first knowledge. It is there before the sense of you. Because you is relative to I. It is I that sees the sense of you. Actually, there is no you. There is only I. Because when you say, I can see you, the knowledge in that form is also knowing itself as I. If you understand this simple thing, it will also begin to reveal more of its mystery, which will deeply please you. And it will give you a lot of encouragement. And you will become naturally more and more attractive, attracted to that state of peace. Even as we are speaking now, and you are listening, it is already spreading inside you. A natural feeling of being. I have been trying to do this with uh, watching my breath, and trying to be as present as possible, not rolling in the past, or thinking of the future. Okay. Trying to be as alive and as present in the present moment. I have yeah. been trying to do that through meditation techniques, like yeah. watching the breath. And uh, what is the result of it? <clears throat> result is, I've, I get uh, temporary relief, and I'm able to maintain it uh, for maybe sometimes two minutes, five minutes. What happens if relief, which is the fruit of that exercise, what happens if even the feeling of relief is also observed? Can you repeat the last part? Yes. What happens? You say after the practice of this, the outcome of the practice is that you feel a little relief. Maybe it doesn't last for very long, but relief is experienced. And normally at this point, many people take that as the prize and say, Ah, now thank you, I've got my relief and so on. But I will press you a little further to say, Don't get excited. Relief also is observed. Then when you pay attention that relief also is something observable, okay, and you don't just combine yourself with relief, the space in which relief is experienced, becomes very, very, very alive for you. You cannot just call it relief. You see? And continue like that. What else comes? Maybe relief comes, and then relief goes. Relief going is also observed. That which observes relief coming and relief going, that does not come and go. Pay attention to that. It does not have any shape or form. It is not a concept. Pay attention to that. Just paying attention is yielding, it is giving uh, back a tremendous uh, awareness of yourself. That is the real fruit of uh, spiritual pursuit. Otherwise, mind arises, is judging. I felt relief, but it's only for ten minutes, and then more things come, and then after that, this thing. Comes. So the mind will come, and it's going to ramble on. And because you abandon prematurely, you're observing. The mind take over and say, "Yeah, well, you know, it's not so successful because the all this is happening again, and the same mind is doing it." So, is it possible to remain in this state twenty-four hours? No. No, it's not no need. First of all, if you um, if you are hungry, you go fishing, and you are fishing out there. And after you catch a fish, do you have to stay all day? No, you catch your fish. It's okay for now. Eat your fish. So what I mean by this is that uh, is to really, uh, if you follow, you can still follow with me. Yeah. So. Uh, when you are observing like that, you see, what's happening is that you are protecting, in some way, your field of being. So it is not intruded upon by the mind flow. Right. You are becoming much more self-aware, right. not object-aware, but self-aware. And this self-awareness is what you are longing for. Right. You see, 
So once you are feel this, if there's more, you'll enjoy also observing. You will enjoy this play of observing. It's not a task, it becomes a joy. Because each time you look, but you don't uh, identify with what you see, in the beginning it might feel difficult. Because the reflex of habit is to keep going back to the old identity as a reference point. But as you observe with detachment, you'll become aware of just the spaciousness in the place where you are. That is. And so you'll become naturally attracted to that state and you'll want to be there more. It's a natural attraction, not a fatal attraction. So when I feel good in such a state, uh. should I should I label it as good and actually feel good because my goodness is immediately followed by its dual dual okay. dual a thing of not feeling so good. Yes, pay attention now. So when that sense, that spaciousness, that joy is felt inside, you see, what it's actually doing is not building up the person, it's weakening the personal sense, which is the cause of much mischief. There is a sense of goodness, of lightness. As you keep on just observing that, don't try to make it anything, just observing, then it will convert the I that has become the person who wants to control into the presence which observe and radiates peace. Can I, can I say that when I'm fully aware, the mind that time does not, does not exist? When you're aware, it means that you are self-aware. You can be aware of mind, but you're not sucked into the mind flow. You're able to observe it, but with detachment. When you observe anything with detachment, you keep the power of your presence. When you observe something with interest or desire, you hemorrhage energy, and the energy goes and it's just dissipated and it's lost quickly. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Please tell me, uh, what is your state of being now? as a result of looking like this? I am extremely present. I, and I am just listening without thinking. Yeah. I repeat, I am listening without thinking. Yeah. Because I am hoping that some word or words may trigger something inside me, yes. which I already... my isness knows. Yes. And I might just discover this I that is on duty now, looking to see what will benefit me, is going to cause trouble. This I feeling that arise, don't identify with that, don't put yourself in this position, because it is not a good assessor. It is not a good, it is also a very emotionally unstable. <laughs> so it will feel, yeah, I'm um, down, oh, and next minute, oh, no. So don't give the measuring to that one. Let that one itself be measured, meaning that you are aware of that state, but don't identify. In fact, as far and as long as possible, don't identify with anything or as anything. There's a spaciousness which is present with you. Don't go into shape. When you go into shape, you come into time, situation, change, all these things come. So when I do that, I feel scared that I may go mad. I feel I might become a zombie. Yes. I might forget who I am. Yes, the mind is going to throw some mud at you for a while, and you have to take it for a bit. Uh, it, it also it, it will begin to come up like this in the form of, yes, this thing, for instance, what you mentioned, like, I'm going mad. That's what comes up when you feel you're losing the sense of control. Because we are uh, obsessed about control. Because of the fear that life is always on the verge of some chaos, and you have to control, otherwise everything will fall apart. That's a, an illusion and a delusion which is perpetuating a state of sadness in you. 
So what happens is when these uh, states come, as you are relaxing, you see, is that the next charge of the stress is coming, like you're going to go crazy. And what happens is that we quickly believe these thoughts, and you believe them into existence, and they become your experience. You are not going mad. As in fact, you are already mad. You are becoming sane. But we don't know that yet, because we have associated being in control with being on top of the water. So this, you must also relax and trust, because every uh, every step, when you are searching for truth, even if it feels like it's bitter. It's going to turn to be to your advantage. So there, bear that. Mm. Are there any signs that you can tell us that yes, I am on the right path, and there are, um, you know, some signs which I know that I'm on the right path. Uh, this transformation happening, because sometimes, since I don't have access to you every day, and I can't call you up and say, Muji, this is happening to me. Um, is are there some guidelines or some things which can tell me yes, I'm on the right path? You have so many help. You only need to become aware of it. Even the invitation you mentioned that is a tremendous friend, because it's like I call it the listening mirror. Because as you listen and you follow, it's revealing your true position, and you must pay attention to that. And uh, and in some way verify. Don't keep doubting because the mind will keep coming, you see. And the, the, the whole habit or reflex is to keep believing what the mind say. We give we the mind energy is highly overrated. We have given too much respect to it. You believe in it, even though it lies so often, we still feel that is the only the only real that's your private Google. You use your mind like that. But as you become more aware of your natural and intuitive power, there will be a switch uh, from relying upon the mind, which is very, very turbulent state and very unsteady state, to rest more in the, in the presence uh, of being. You see? So that's a good indicator. You will start to feel less stressed, more spacious, more open. More open, you see, and they come quickly. It's not that you have to wait for six months, you know, eight months. No, quickly. This is a tree that bears fruit immediately. Once planted, this tree bears fruit immediately. What is the fruit of this tree? Peace, joy, openness. Spaciousness, contentment, the blossoming of uh, universal love. This is your peace. Plenty of indicators, plenty of support also. You simply need to be aware of them. Many times things come to you and the mind mislabels them as inauspicious, when in fact, if you watch from your stillness, you will see that something that looked like it came in rough packaging had a diamond in it. But the mind is saying, Haha, who will send something like that in the bin? And so these things you will develop much more sensitivity, much better quality of discernment, but they are coming automatically. I am not giving you a job. I'm just saying, all you need to do is to keep paying attention to the traffic of thoughts, sensations at first, and don't own them. Just if you don't own them, meaning that you stay detached from them, you'll become naturally self aware, not phenomenon aware only, but self aware is not an object awareness, it's a sort of vibration field, and you'll enjoy and you become naturally attracted to that. The more you're attracted to this, the more you'll develop in it. Muji, is there a technique? Is there a what? Technique. Technique. For example, you say, be self-aware, be this, do that. My question is, is there a specific technique to do that? For example, 
that there may be a technique to watch your breath which may bring you self awareness or at least in the presence so is there a okay technique? okay let's do now you are asking like that i've given you a very simple direction you're a lawyer you know yeah, okay i don't know how much you listen huh? but uh, <laughs> um, the very simple direction now you're asking even technique i'm going to show you now if i say including all that i've said to you right now if you don't hold any any impression in your mind don't don't be think oh yeah, yeah okay this question no question and also nothing that you think you know if you can just leave it aside for now just leave everything yes everything everything pull the chain Shh. everything just don't touch anything at all but really do it and anyone can join in this it's so simple leave everything first even your identity your role as a lawyer as a father as whatever just for a moment just don't hold those and just leave them aside for a moment so that you can experience an emptiness do this now just drop everything yeah this is going to be the easiest of technique it's a non technique technique <laughs> drop everything just don't hold on don't carry don't put anything in any pocket or nothing leave everything keep doing don't hold on whatever you can think of just uh, just leave it for the moment and when we are finished like this in a few moments you can pick them back up again but just like this you do it just do it now hmm? yes just empty 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 you are not a container of information now uh, beyond memory don't refer to memory or time just like that empty 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 and everyone can do this this is one of the great free gifts of life empty 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 and don't pick anything up now so empty 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 even of somebody being empty just empty just do don't imagine emptiness they just let go everyone can do some people find even this difficult because they feel it's a technique so it's not a technique just you drop it empty and even the idea okay now what don't touch that no next no next simply be pay attention no event empty 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 all i ask you is only to be aware empty awareness empty and aware no waiting no concepts hmm? maybe mind wants to come in to say something but not right now later empty stay empty okay empty empty now like this just pay attention first that it is possible first thing that it is possible to drop everything okay don't pick anything up and even the sense that okay i have done it don't touch even this you have done nothing at all you just uh, allowed uh, that the usual habit to not be engaged with that's it So first of all be aware of what is here if everything can be taken out you will come now to see everything i have left out what is it that remains by itself which was not put there and cannot be taken out even the sense of yourself as a person don't use that as a reference so even if the person 
the self-image, the self-portrait of yourself can be disregarded for a moment. What is here now? Don't answer yet. I'm just use my question, pay attention. What remains, you see? That which remains, that which remains here now. Is it personal? Does it have to make any decision? Answer. <clears throat> that which remains <clears throat> cannot be described in words or symbols, Very but good. it can be experienced. Yes. It, it has been experienced by another or where? What is experiencing it? It is experience itself. It is experience itself. It is experience itself. So it's not it one is, thing experiencing another thing. It, it is, is an experiencing. Yes. It is an experiencing. Stay right here. In this, is, it, is there any effort here? No, I, I... No effort. Okay. It is not no. a doing, it's a happening. Yes. Is it a happening? I think so. No, don't think, look. Is it an happening? Pay attention now. Everyone who chooses to look in this way, is it a happening? Please answer. But it is not a doing. So it is not a doing. It is a presence. And maybe new English word, presencing. I will accept for the moment. Can it, uh, can it by itself? Because did you create it? No. No. Can it go away? No. Thank you. Is there a boundary beyond which it is not? Limitless. Limitless Atam. and forever. Okay. Can it become sick? No. Depressed? No. Confused? No. No. But thank you. So it's the nameless. We can't name it. Yes. It's not an object. Yeah. Uh, it's don't put too much commentary. I am going to ask, like you told me before, yes or no. I am going to say, for you, yes or no. Okay? Yeah. You are becoming aware, and you are aware of it now, but where has it been all this time? Always been here. It's always been here. How do you know it's always been here? <clears throat> you said that without thinking, and I accept. What gives you the authority to say it's always been here? Because it feels that way, and it, I don't see a beginning or an end. Yes. Okay. Then the next question you have half taken. You did not create it. Was it born or created? No, neither. Okay. Can it come to an end? No. Thank you. Just like this is good. Is it a belief system? No, it's reality. Ah. It's the truth. 
satya is it bound by time not at all timeless okay let's take one more question and that would be this question is what must you do to reach it do nothing why do nothing no effort how far away from you is it no distance no distance so if you say and you agree it is not personal it was not created it's not merely a mood or something it's not a philosophy or a se- or some kind of belief system is it a religion no no uh, it cannot become sick or depressed or confused it was not born it cannot die it is not time it cannot fade then i ask you um, you are discovering it now but where has it been until now you say it's always been here it's timeless there is no part of the universe where it doesn't exist now i ask this question to you what can you do to get to it how much distance you say no distance and so this is why i say that if all these things are true you did not do and you did not have to go away to do any research about this out of your own being you could confirm with such confidence then you must be speaking perceiving knowing yourself this is the self is it an object does it have shape now comes this i feeling the i feeling that comes and say yes but how can i how can i uh, how can i i mean how can i use it will it help me to find a better job and then who is this me where it come from because this is what i say when the mind will come and it is important that the mind come because your understanding must be tested the mind will come in the most powerful way as i it will arise as i itself you will says you know well you know how can i do this you know how can i how can i uh, keep staying here i said how are you staying here at the moment are you staying here so until this question come and if this question is accepted then comes a doubt then comes some struggle just like that simply what to do keep marinating your attention in this natural self discovery don't let it turn into any story you don't need any adventures simply marinate your attention in it and gradually the noise of mind and the duality and all of these things they are completely thinning away thinning away thinning away that is this is your sadhana if you want to say meaning your practice to because mind will keep coming and saying oh it was much better yesterday the self cannot be better 
one day and less one day. So it's just a question of whether it can trick you into purchasing duality again in this way. And this you must watch. Vigilant watch. And as you keep looking, sometimes man will say, but how long I've got to keep looking? You know, it's just so I mean we're not getting anywhere. And to see if something comes from you, which is judgment, identification, it will try to appeal to these energies or powers in you. If it catches them, it will pull you into some shape. You remain shapeless. Simple thing. If you can do this, because this is what the sages have done, if you want to say do, they have paid attention, they have understood the mechanism of the psychological identity, and they have transcended its influence, just like you. But if you go with habit and, yeah, I don't know, it was very nice when I was in Rishikesh, but now I don't know, da, 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 da. and anyway, I can't call Muji, he's too far away, and, da, 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 da. and you're back into role as Mr. Stupid. Because that's what it is. Uh, uh, the mind in the form of ego is stupidness, believing in itself. Uh, so you have been shown. Now, to what extent you will accept this simple guidance, simple and effective, immediate effectiveness of this guidance. As soon as you come to this seeing, I say to people, a storm is coming. A storm is coming. What did it mean? That uh, the mind is going to come. And the only way it can blow you uh, is by getting you to re-identify personally. Because right now, if you are followed, you are not a person. Yeah. You are the pure consciousness. Mind can only intimidate you or to somehow overwhelm you if it gets you to become personal. And that has been easy in the past. Let's see how easy it is now. And he will keep coming. And the more you don't say, Oh, why is the mind keep coming? And why is it keep coming? Because that itself is mind. You already picked it up. You just observe. What it you know? Uh, observe and stay in that neutrality. That is the most excellent advice I can give you right now. Honour it, that's all. Follow it, and you will yourself be the proof of its success. Thank you, Muji. Thank you. Once again, I love you. Love you too. Very good, very good.